this is Shannon from SIS for Teacher. Today we're going to be talking about fractions larger than one, taking them to a mixed number. In this video, you can learn more about how to take our manipulatives that we're using, which are our area model papers, to kind of explain how to do this. Let's just think about this for a second. If we were to think of um, a fraction of 11 eighths, some people might call this an improper fraction. And in fact, sometimes we do see that word used still in books, and I've even seen it in some tests. But really, what is this fraction? What is 11 eighths? I mean, if I was really hungry, I might eat 11 eighths of all the pizzas. I mean, is that improper? So we like to think for kids to really think about this as a fraction larger than one. When we see a top heavy fraction or the numerator having more than the denominator, what that means is that fraction is larger than one. And so we really want to get that meaning of what that looks like. When we say it's an improper fraction, kids might call it that, but they don't really understand why. What we want to try to do is take this into a mixed number. And so the idea of how to do this might help by figuring out what is the whole that we're talking about. And so we're going to use our friend DC to kind of decompose or pull out the whole. If it's fraction larger than one, what is the whole? The whole in this case is eighths. So if I wanted to pull out a whole, it should be equal to eight eighths. So I'm going to use my red sheet here in my colored area model papers, and I'm going to get out 11 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So right here, I have concretely what this actually is, which is actually 11 eighths. If I want to pull out a hole, we're going to see how many eighths fill that hole. If we know our fractions that are equal to one, we should know that all eight eighths will cover. And so that's when we decompose. Some students can just look at this and you know that eight eighths is equal to one. I like to have students circle that hole to let me know that you've pulled out one hole out of that total. Now I do have some left. If I look here, I have how many eighths left? Well, I have one, two, three. So I have three eighths left. So to solve this, I know that I have one and three eighths. When you're using um, fractions larger than one and taking them into a mixed number, it's really important for students that don't understand it to have them use pattern blocks, maybe patty paper, even the area model papers to help them to understand how to do taking a fraction larger than one into a mixed number. Let's try another example to see before you try this out on your own in your classroom. We're gonna erase the board and come up with another fraction that we could think of that would help us to kind of look at this concept. Let's say I used force this time and maybe I wanted to use seven fourths. And so I'm gonna first get out my seven fourths for students that might need to see this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a lot more steps when we have to think about how to divide and some students might find this way of decomposing with DC a little bit easier. So we know that we want to pull out the whole and see how many there are. We know in this case it's four fours, but let's just check it to see. If we have four fourths, is that indeed equal to one whole? Yes. So I'm going to pull out four fourths. I'm going to circle it because I know that that's equal to one whole. How many fourths am I now left with? We originally were talking about seven fourths. I have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So if I decompose seven fourths into four fourths and three fourths, it would still equal what we're talking about here, which is seven fourths. Therefore, if I want to change a fraction from larger than one to a mixed number, it would be one and three fourths. I think using the area model papers or pattern blocks for students to understand how to take a fraction that's larger than one and decompose it is really helpful. You also could do this with larger numbers where you might even pull out one, two, or three holes and then be able to decompose it to have a firm understanding of really what's happening when you have a fraction that is larger than one and kind of transferring it into 
um, a, a really more of a mixed number. If you're unfamiliar with our area model papers, you can check out our YouTube video on our website and SIS for Teachers to see how to set these up for your classroom. Um, we hope that you enjoyed our video and that you check out our other fraction videos on multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us.